Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Forsaken Shores patch notes, uh, which is 1.3.0. Okay, so it's finally here. We've waited an extra couple of weeks to get our hands on Forsaken Shores. More videos will come very soon to what's new and what's not. Um, but today it's just going to be about the patch notes as I haven't had actual chance to get out there and play yet. So this week's update, it says, introduces Forsaken Shores, which you all know about. The third free update for Sea of Thieves. A long lost region has been rediscovered. Uh, a perilous land known as Devil's Roar up and go from sea dog to scout in this strange treacherous place where the world itself self is your enemy stand fearlessly before the devil's roar as it becomes a permanent new part of your adventure okay so the first few things it, it, it explains in the patch notes are the devil's roar map explore the newly emerged lands lands to the east where both sea and land provide a new hazard for unwary pirates volcanoes explaining in a furry inferno inferno uh, Volcanoes rain down hot rocks that damage players and ships. It has never been more important to think carefully about carefully about where you anchor. Earthquakes, tremor, tremors have forcefully shaped the ground and the players in the vicinity. Some of these earthquakes are, earthquakes are isolated, but they also but they may also foreshadow a volcanic eruption. Geysers are active in Forsaken Shores and they can launch players into the air, so watch your step. Lava full ore zones become active during a volcanic eruption and will cause damage over time if you stand on them, so keep moving. Superheated water. During a volcanic eruption, the waters around the island become superheated. Damage is not applied to ships, but pirates who opt to stand or swim in the superheated water will find themselves in dire need of a banana. Water in your hull can also become superheated, so have your buckets at the ready. And we've got rowboats, which we knew uh, find these new additions washed up on islands. They can be pushed into the water and dock to your ship to be transported around the sea. And we have the new sea posts as well that I previously mentioned. Uh, these appear across the Sea of Thieves, offering discounts on a selection of items that change over time. So we have commendations as always. We have uh, 23 standard accommodations for the first two weeks of Forsaken Shores. Additional commendations are coming as part of weeks three and four. Uh, so they previously said it was going to be three weeks, but I think they had a problem with cargo runs. So it looks like... Uh, which they said was hopefully going to be in for week three so they're obviously going to make an extra week as well for the campaign which is pretty awesome and all these commendations are here to stay we have some new build rat adventure titles or titles um, it earn two new unique titles introduced in the first two weeks of forsaken shores equip them straight away from the vanity chest you will be a devil's cartographer or a master devil's voyager Additional titles are coming later in the Forsaken Shores campaign. And Bilge Rat Doubloons, there are 185 Bilge Rat Doubloons available for the commendations during the first two weeks. Additional doubloons will be made available from week three, alongside additional commendations. Each of the Forsaken Shores commendations on the Bilge Rat progression screen show the number of Bilge Rat Doubloons it awards. So we've got cosmetics, as we already kind of seen, most people knew about the new cosmetics. Uh, there are limited time items. The Forsaken Ashes weapons and ship libraries are available through the Forsaken Shores campaign. Visit Duke in any tavern and exchange your doubloons while they are in stock. The Forsaken Ashes clothes and items. Uh, the Forsaken Ashes clothes and items are now stocked at Morrow's Peak Outpost. Only pirates who have dared to explore the Devil's Roar will be able to purchase these items. These are a permanent addition and can be purchased with gold. The Ocean Crawler set is also the clothing item weapons and ship libraries are now shopped at their respective shops on the morrow's peak uh, they can also be purchased with the gold the kraken set the same thing again much morrow's peak outpost and again can be purchased with gold there's one other thing to add uh, which is the huntress figure head uh, now stopped by the ship right on morrow's peak outpost this figure head was exclusively exclusively awarded to players around San Diego Comic-Con and Gamescom 2018 but is now available to all pirates in exchange for gold. There's a nice notification there as well. So after feedback uh, they have done some barrel improvements um, to the barrels and inventory management that they did in patch 1.2.4 and they've improved the stocking up speed which will give a significant reduce the numbers of button pressing required uh, they will continue to monitor feedback so the barrel take slash store all players can now take and store stacks of resources with a single button press the barrel auto advance when removing resources from barrels 
If all items in the stack are removed, the next stack will remain with remaining resources will automatically be selected. The resource capacity, when carrying the maximum number of specific resource in your inventory, this resource will clearly be marked in red. Mark be marked red in any barrels to indicate that you can't carry any more. And UI close delay. The short animation of UI closing has been disabled, so players resume control of their pirate immediately. This impacts the closing of, a, of the full screen UI from shops and barrels to settings and crew menus. So updates is at the build rack shop. The build rack shop now has tabs so that the time limited items appear on separate pages to the letter of recommendation and gold bags. The maps in barrels. Similar to messages in bottles, maps can now be found within barrels. That's pretty cool. Uh, map radical. Voyage maps which have been purchased and voted upon will now appear in front of all the emergent message in the bottles, maps, barrels, so the most important maps are always the easiest to find. So they've jigged it around so that we can get a message of all it doesn't push it to the top anymore. This is especially important if you're doing an Athena's quest because you have the eight, fills up the, the uh, radical uh, and then you, you pick up stuff on the way around and it just pushes it and messes it around a little bit. So that's pretty cool. I like the maps in a barrel as well. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, because that can just be random treasure maps then, I presume. That's pretty cool, I think. In the barrels, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. It's going to it's gonna be the treasure maps, isn't it? Uh, but they're going to be in barrels as well, which is awesome. So performance improvements are multiple memory improvements and the usual multiple server and client, client crashes have been resolved. There's quite a few fixed issues to go through. I know this is a really long video this time. Uh, we've got gold skeletons are now appropriately rusted by buckets of water. Player levels of reputation each trade with each trading company now correctly display on the reputation screen. NPC dialogue will no longer get stuck on stream when players are attacking skeletons. Barrel names and ships are now correctly localized. The animation for reloading the pistol will now appear consistently. It is no longer possible to drop a chest between the deck and the side of the galleon at the front, making it impossible to pick up. Players holding a chest of a thousand grogs will no longer become permanently drunk, even after dropping the chest. The lowly merchant watch no longer appears closed when you show it to the players. Preview and preview items in the clothes shops on outposts in the plain shores of plenty will now correctly display the items you've selected. The items you store in the first slot of the barrel, which you previously looted, will no longer be invisible. The decals that appear after digging no longer appear to have lines running through them. Back and discard tool tips are no longer missing from the Voyager's inventory. It is no longer it is no longer possible to clip into the mountain rocks on ancient spire outpost. Looking up with an item equipped equip will no longer cause your hand to appear invisible. And light emitted onto the sea from a lantern no longer caused a pixelated effect. Okay, so there's a couple of known issues already. Uh, always can appear to disconnect from the robo robot along with the player only visible in third person mermaid statues have been temporarily disabled to improve performance issues so the mermaid statues are gone uh, that's not too much of a bad thing improvements to this are being investigated and the intention is to re-enable these as soon as possible merchant alliance crates on board a ship that sinks will not float to the surface and cannot be picked up have identified the issue and are working on a fix and walking on a rowboat can appear jittery that is everything that there is for the patch of 1.3.0, which is bringing Forsaken Shores. Let me know if you've managed to play it by the time this goes out. Let me know what you think about it. Um, and like I say, there'll be more videos coming very soon covering everything there is about Forsaken Shores. Um, on the patch notes, there's actually no download sizes, so I can't really comment on that. But yeah, Forsaken Shores is here. The hype has finally reached us. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. That's it for today's video. If it's been helpful to you, then do consider to like, subscribe, share, and comment in the comment section. Have a great rest of your voyages, guys, and take care.